Okay. I hope you tried this one on your own. I didn't specifically tell you to, but I hope that you did. If not, pause the video and try this problem, and then you can come back and watch and see how I'm going to do it. I need good hold music for like just one second to give you a bit to, to hit that pause button. Okay, so we have this data. The half-life of a radioisotope is found to be 4.55 minutes. Now, one of the best strategies when you're doing problems in science is to immediately convert that into something symbolic. That's supposed to say two. So it says half-life. We represent that as T1 half. And it says 4.55 minutes. This is where units matter because sometimes they'll give us half-lives in minutes, but then they'll give you a total time that's like days long and you have to have those match. So be careful. Now, oh look, see they do that, minutes and hours. That was just a guess, I didn't even read the whole problem. If the de decay follows first order kinetics, okay, so that means I can use all of those first order equations, right? I can use this one. And I can use the integrated rate law. These ones I don't expect you guys to remember off the top of your heads, right? Or I could use the other one where we put these in, um, you know, divide them. We have lots of choices. Oh, and we also have negative 0 0.69 equals, uh, I didn't get myself enough room. negative 0.69 equals negative k t one half. So all of these things are handy tools that we can use. So then it says, if the decay follows first order kinetics, what percentage? Ooh, okay, so percentage, percentage to me means we need either decimal value and then multiply by 100 or maybe a fraction because we can turn fractions into decimals. Okay, so what percentage of isotope will remain after two hours? So none of these have a fraction in them, but I remember, I just briefly mentioned it, that we can use this version, which is a fraction. So that might be handier than all the others. Okay, so I, got, I wrote that one too. So we have two hours and our half-life is in minutes. So we're probably gonna have to convert that. I'm gonna convert two hours into minutes, not for any particular reason, just because I really don't like having 0 .00 blah, 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 or something. Um, but you could go the other way. You'll get to the same place. Oh, I don't even need to, why did I? I was gonna reach for my calculator, you guys, that's so silly. So our total time is 120 minutes. Okay, well, we also know the half-life. And so we have this one equation here, which if you have the half-life, you can find K. So I think I'll do that. Oh, that's a five. So, that's um, kind of just on instinct. I kind of just looked at what information I was provided with and asked, you know, based on these equations, what do I have enough information about to use? So K here is going to be 0 0.1516. So not a very fast reaction. And the unit there ends up being uh, inverse minutes because you divided by minutes. Okay. So. Okay, get it? Yeah, that's the K. <laughs> so then I'm gonna just kind of step back for a second and be like, okay, well, what do I have enough information to do something with? I don't know how much I'm, I have at this particular moment in time after two hours. That's like kind of what the question is asking. And I don't know how much I started with. So I can't really use this equation. Uh, I don't know the concentration, so I can't use this one. This one's a ratio though, and that's kind of what we want to get to because it's asking for a percentage. So I think I'm going to try to use that one. And so like if, uh, if I go mm, ln of whatever concentration at the time, at two hours actually. So you can even just put two hours in there if you want to. Um, 
turns out it's really hard to draw parentheses at the bottom of the screen with this tablet. All right, so we got that. And it equals the negative k, which is this number. times the time. So this is why I had to convert because if I multiply inverse minutes by hours, it won't cancel. But if I go 120 minutes here, magically the weird inverse minutes just go away. It's not magic, it's math. <laughs> okay, so we get that number times 120 on the right. So this ends up being ln of all that again. I'm stopped drawing the the brackets inside just to sort of simplify the visual a little bit. But we have all that on the left and it equals 18 point, oops, negative, that's important, don't lose it, 18.1978022. So I'm gonna just round that, 18.2. Um, so now you might be asking, now what do we do, Professor Miller? And that's a logarithm rule also. So the way to get rid of the log is to um, essentially raise it to the base of that logarithm. So this is ln, the base of ln is e. So you're literally gonna take the natural number e and apply it to both sides. Now on your calculator, it's gonna be in a different place. I just happen to have only a TI-84 um, here at home. But for this one, it's right there. So it's, so my LN button is there. And then right above that in light blue, it says cursive E raised to something. That's the natural number. It's not the same thing as the capital E, e that I use in my exponents. Okay. So make sure you know how to find the right one. If you're using LOG, which we're not here, but there are other versions of this equation that do. If you're using LOG, it's base 10. So it'd be 10 carat or raised to whatever you have. So here, I'm just going to put in the little magic E, and it looks different. It's cursive. See, I don't know if you guys can see my screen. I don't know how to make my calculator visible. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, it's the cursive little E, not the big E. Um, and it's going to be raised to the negative 1 point, or no, 18.2. And that answer, so here, these are going to undo each other. This is just a number. So then you end up with the concentration at whatever time over concentration in the beginning is equal to 1.25, I rounded, times 10 to the negative 8. This is really little. This is a ratio, which a fraction, which is kind of like a decimal, which is kind of like a percentage. So of course, if I want to make this into a percentage, I just multiply the whole thing by 100%. So 1.25 times 10 to the 8, negative 8, is going to be the same thing, but 10 to the negative 6%. And that is how much is left. It's a very small amount. So that's an example of how we use those equations for first order kinetics. The main trick, if you will, is to kind of brainstorm what equations might be useful based on the information in the problem, and then decide some of the verbiage, like what's a percentage? Oh, that's the same as a decimal, which is also the same as a fraction. Um, and then just kind of look and decide, what do I have that I have enough information to use one of these equations? See where that gets you. Okay. At the very least, you'll get partial credit. <laughs>